Hi guys, back with another video where I just ramble on about some stuff. So this time is going to be the greatest mistakes in gaming. Naturally, this is my opinion. You may even think some of the things are mistakes, but frankly, I don't care. It's going to be my thoughts on various things. You'll also be able to find what I'm going to say, the general idea of what I'm going to say in the description down below so you can save like whatever amount of time life, of your life that this video is going to take. So... Number one, trophies and achievements, you know. I remember the golden age in PS2, man. You know, you just pop in your game, you play it, you do what you want. And, you know, you move on your life. You have great, great memories. But then, starting the seventh, seventh generation, I believe it is, Xbox and, and, and uh, no, Xbox 360 and PS3, you have these trophies and achievements. And, yeah, sure, you just ignore them and stuff but it's just such a terrible it's just a terrible concept it's a it's terrible pointless concept and sometimes even offensive when you have uh when you have some games that are so easy where it's like press start on the the title screen or or you know cl clear clear story stages i'm like i don't need you to i don't need you people to tell me what i should be trying to do in the game i just want to play it myself and even if I can just do that, those things there are just an annoying reminder of how bad the gaming industry is today. So yes, I hate trophies and achievements. Number two, region lock. I think a, a lot of people probably won't know what I'm talking about this or haven't experienced it. But in any case, we'll take um, the PS PS3 for example. I believe they don't have a region lock. What a region lock is, say, say, we'll say, say, we'll talk about PS3, right? Say, um, if you do, then you can only play games on that console that are made in the same region. So, say, if you live in America, you'd only be able to play the, or uh, I, think, I think it's NTSU games. You wouldn't be able to play PAL, which is, um, the European versions, or, uh, Japanese, which um, I'm not exactly sure what which what their what their code was for that. In any case, uh, region locking can be a can be a problem if you want to play games from that that aren't released in your region without having to get like a console from that region, and it's it's just an unnecessary restriction. Number three, save locking. This one, this one is personally, personally drove me insane. As a person who likes, I, li I like to make backups of my save file, especially for game save files, especially for longer games where you spend lots of time in it. And you know, you don't want your save file to get corrupt corrupted by some nonsense. And... You go to copy it to a USB stick or a hard drive or what have you, and the things like you can't copy your save data. And I'm like, what do you mean I can't copy my save data? Why are you restricting me for this nonsense? Oh, let's take a step back to number one. It's because of trophies and achievements, right? Because if you, by chance, you you load a thing with all these things already achieved, oh no, somebody's gonna get these useless freaking trophies and achievements and points and all this the digital images that I I don't give a crap about. And, um, yeah, like, not being able to, like, copy your saves for whatever reason you have, that really bothers me. <laughs> I like have I like having my backup. And, you know, if your system dies, uh, that's another thing, too. If, you, if your system dies, right, because, you know, the systems won't last forever... If you can't make a backup of your save, you have a you have a time limit before while well, you lost that data. Of course, by that point, maybe maybe you stop playing the game. But you know, some people some people like me, you know, every now and then you might want to go go back to all the games you know play for a little bit, nostalgia and whatnot. So, save locking is a really stupid idea. Never should have happened. Um, number four, 
stopping backwards compatibility. You remember the good old days if, if you were a Sony person, not so much Nintendo, but if you were a Sony person up until the PS2 days, or even early the early PS3 uh, models, I think it was like uh, 20 through 80, 80 gigs, you could, you could play play games through all the generations. And it was so fantastic, because like... That was another incentive to get a new and the the next gen system because not only would you have access to the the new stuff that's out right, but you also have a, a new system that's you know not has a longer lifespan than your old one that 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 may may or may not die, who knows? And you can still play your old games; they're not like obsolete. But for whatever for whatever reason, I I don't I don't honestly know if it. If it's difficult to do the compatibility or not, I guess with the PS3 Blu-ray thing, maybe there was some complication there, or maybe it was just plain greed. Because then it came out with the PS Store nonsense, and they're like, "Okay, well, you could rebuy the games here." So I was like, "Screw you, people!" No, I'm not. I'm not cool with that. So yes, yeah, so, um, getting rid of backwards compatibility is just terrible. That's what's one fantastic thing about PC gaming, is that. You know, even if you own a new PC, you can still pretty much play any game that's on PC. You might have to go through workarounds and troubleshoots, yes. You know, newer video cards and stuff, and some of those earlier games in the 90s, you might have to do some troubleshooting to get them to work. But chances are you might be able, to, you'll probably be able to find a way to get, get the game to work. Which is still better than not being able to at all. Never forget the old games. They may be old, but plenty of them are still amazing to this, this day. So where were we? Number five. PS2 launching without online capability. For it, it, It's truly unfortunate this happened. It's the Xbox, especially because the Halo, definitely got over them. But, you know, so, so, some, of, some, some of the best year, times of my life gaming... We're on the PS2, playing Resident Evil Outbreak File 1 and 2, the Metal Gear Solid 3 Online when they when they came out with the uh, substance, subsistence version. It was like the, the re-release, and it had online mode and uh, I think the little duck, uh, duck gecko mode thing where you should run around shooting frogs or something. But yeah, those were, those were some great times in my life. And I feel that, you know, the community... Especially compared to the uh, Halo community, because the Halos was like in the millions, right? I'm not not really uh, aware, of, informed about the Xbox thing. We'll we'll say it's between or uh, one to ten million, I guess, back in the Halo three or whatever days. But yeah, you know, the communities for the PS two probably in great deal to not not only did the PS two not have online ability on release, but the no, I think they're called network adapters, were fairly expensive. If I remember, around when they were new, they were going for, like, uh, around $100. And I think it may or may not have came with uh, Final, the Final, Final Fantasy Eleven. It's, like, the online one. They had a pretty small community, of course. Yeah, because it's, it's costly, man. So... It, it truly is unfortunate that the original versions of the PS3 didn't have the network ability because I think that would I think that would have done a whole lot for it if they initially had it and the trouble the the setup the setup setup for some people might have also been a bit of a turnoff but um yeah definitely it's it's unfortunate the PS2 you know lacked that at the time for one reason or another. Number six, a PSP button design. For those of you who, you know, ever owned a PSP, it's the handheld system made by Sony for play games, music, or whatnot. I love that system. It, you know, it, it has some good good games that I've enjoyed throughout the time. Back when I played Yu Yu Gi Oh! Um, Yu Gi Oh! Tag Force, like, uh, three, four, five. And, uh, what else is there? Monster Hunter is one of the ones I've dedicated the most time to because the controls for that are fantastic. You know, once you get used to playing a game, playing a thing. But my 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 concern with the system is that the, the X square, circle, and triangle, like 
under the buttons, I guess there was like this air air pressure pad thing, and each time you press a button, like the air slightly leaks out. So eventually, at some point, given you, you'll be you'll, given you'll uh, have played a, a good amount before this, but still, the buttons will eventually stick down and not come back up. So basically, because it's not a controller and it's an actual system, you're either gonna have to get you either have to get a new PSP. Or, or you, you know, have to open it up, maybe go online, buy some the the air pad and re refix it yourself. Probably probably better, probably better if you, if you, if you could do that because it would be it would be much cheaper. And that 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 just annoyed me because you know, I'm gonna look at console controllers and stuff. They're done right. I, I I've never actually opened one, but I assume it's like the like a greenish metal plating thing under the buttons that like. It pretty much never died of like I mean I've you have like problems with like N64 joysticks but um most controllers like they they last like I don't really ne haven't really experienced them dying ex exactly so that is an unfortunate design of the the Sony PSP is those four buttons what else have we got Number seven, overpriced systems on launch. Let's see. Uh, I don't remember exact numbers, uh, but we'll say the P the Xbox uh, 360, right? Xbox 360. I th I want to say was like five hundred dollars on, on release, right? I mean, Y'all could correct me, correct me or not. I don't really feel like looking it up, honestly. The PS3, I I'm pretty sure was more. Like maybe like six hundred or something. I don't know, but the the price the pr prices for them were were so obnoxious. Um, during what what did the generation we're on now? Like the eighth generation, the PS, uh, the Xbox. No wait, the PS la three, four launched at four hundred, right? And uh, Xbox One launched at five hundred. I mean, being realistic, we all, any, I mean, their hardware is like what t ten years under the maximum what the PC actually is at right now. You know, what the current technology is. Like, on their release, they were already 10 years uh, outdated, which is why, like, within, like, a year or two, they already came out with, like, the Xbox uh, S or something. I, honestly, I don't pay too much attention to consoles, so sorry if I get some of the, any information wrong. And, and I think there's a Scorpio, right? The Xbox Scorpio? Or they're the, the same thing. I, I can't remember if the PS... PlayStation came out with anything or what it was what it was called, but um, you know their prices pr prices were okay. And speaking speaking of overpriced things, this it go along with the PSP thing as too, like how how their buttons would die, and it's 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 a gaming system, so you'd have to buy another one. Which oh, how much did they cost? Was it over a hundred and some? 170 or something I don't know but it but it was too, but it was it was too much money for something that wasn't gonna last in the long term uh, let's see next is eight not having retail versions of games they it's like you know digital like I, I'm, I'm personally the kind of old school old school gamer I like to have physical discs for for when when it comes to consoles, like I I don't mind like uh, Steam or uh, free indie games. You know you can just download them. You don't really have to worry too much about it. But with consoles, I like to have a disc. You know my con when my console dies or X years later when their servers are down, I don't want to. I don't want to be like oh well, I don't really own this game anymore because. Uh, I don't have the ability to play it because it was on my console that died and their network's down so the money I paid for is gone like and no I don't feel like oh well I played it already so I it, it, it's okay like you know if I want to go back to something that I paid money on for entertainment like the 10 whatever years later I want to be able to do that I am not a fan of digital games so I thought like why couldn't they just like make them for orders? Like, I'm gonna like people just like order them, 
and have them directly like mail to their house like hey I want a physical copy of this I'll pay you for, I'll pay you for it right I want to be I want it wouldn't be that hard to do that they wouldn't have to give the money through dis, dis, um, distributors like uh, GameStop uh, eBay Walmart whatever whatever place in your areas uh, sell games. So yes, uh, again, number eight was not having retail versions of games, or or otherwise physical copies like discs. And of course, this applies more to consoles, in my personal opinion, than to computers. Um, number nine, releasing unfinished or buggy games. I'll just say a few in case you somehow live under a rock. Batman, Ar Arkham City, I think like well one of the one of the Batman games. I heard I heard there's problems with like it not being able to save or save just like automatically deleting itself and stuff. Um, I heard there was a lot of problems with Assass uh, Assassin's Creed. I think it was the Unity. I think it was the, I believe it was the third game that had massive massive bugs in it. And uh, what was one of the first person shooter games? Uh, battle Battlefield. Oh dear. I I, I want to say it was Battlefield Four. I think it was that one. And they said that I I I heard that there was plenty of problems uh with that on release. And then there's um, another recent one um a more recent one a uh, Mass Effect uh, Andromeda. Oh gosh, just watching like thirty to sixty minutes of glitch footage of that was. It's just painful. I can't believe they would release that for a sixty-dollar project, a company project, not even like an any project where you're like, okay, well, it's like one, one or one to f a few people working on it. You can expect glitches. You can let them know, give them feedback. But no, like companies releasing games which have bugs in it and stuff that shouldn't, should not exist on release. Like, come on, they're professional companies. That that's st that stuff shouldn't be happening. So yes. Number nine, releasing unfinished or buggy games. Before before moving on, real quick, um, I was thinking of having an honor, honorable mention honorable mention section in saying like episodic games. It's personally like a hit and miss topic for me. I could I could kind of see the the good and bad points of that, so leave leave that as you will. Take that as you will. Number ten. Day one DLC. No, why would I have a problem with DLC? Well, you already know. You probably already know my thoughts on DLC. If you see my uh, video about DLC, that well, it can. I feel it can be done right, but I can't really defend day one DLC because to me that feels like they literally. It's just something they literally ripped out of the game. And. They want extra money for it, <laughs> like they they literally rip a part. The same with the pre-order pre-order thing too. You know, you know how like if you pre-order something, you get uh, this extra content or something. It's the same thing with deal day one DLC. Is that something was like taken out of the game that was already m pl built for the full game, and you either pay extra money for it or it's an incentive to get. To pay money before the game comes out, like say we'll take uh, say GameStop as an example. I've heard they, I've heard they like, uh, bribe or force course whatever the whatever the situation is, the game companies to do this, so they could do the 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 pre order thing. So they are in, they are from my understanding part of this problem. Is, is this a huge issue? Well. Yes and no. I, I I still think I think it's wrong. I'm not exactly sure how how uh, how I can't even think of the word how se severe. There we go. I can't even think how how severe of an issue this is. But I would say I would say it's an issue nonetheless with modern gaming. Moving on, number eleven, microtransactions. If you're into if you're into gaming in this age, by gosh, you know what this is. And by gosh, you know, you know that you know it's terrible. 
I'm not even going to give my thoughts on it because you, you just can't defend this crap. But just in case you somehow, somehow don't know what microtransaction is, we'll use an example. Um, Re Resident Evil Revelations 2, there's like these hearts, uh, a pink and or pink and a blue one. W one of them's free, one of them's microtransaction. Uh, what what it does like if you if you if you die in the the raid mode, uh, you you come back alive and you keep fighting. I honestly forget which one's which, because it's been a while since I played the game. But uh, you you pay real pay, pay real money just so you can get like stupid things like, well we'll say it's the red one, so you can get the extra red hearts, you can get more lives in the game. For her, it's like. Uh, micro drink. Uh, there's another game. There's another game where like they wanted like two dollars to unlock all the game modes, so you didn't have to play the game to unlock the modes. It's like it's like just really stupid things that you're paying real money for to unlock, and it's like honestly, the problem is the pe the problem problem in this case, if not others, is also the people, the community, the us, the people who dare to give them money for this absurd thing. It's like what do you? Pe what are the, why are the companies doing it? Because people are dumb enough to freaking fork fork over cash, regardless of how little or little or large that amount is, for things that they really should just be playing the game to to get in the first place. And on top of that, I believe I believe there there are cases that people, you know, people I've seen others talk about where de developers will like. Say, say if it's like an RPG or something, we had to like work towards getting something. You do a lot of grinding to get experience, right? Well, I've I've heard that developers will in increase the time it takes to do that, thus like slowing the gameplay down tremendously, so that people are more inclined to spend real money so they could actually progress in the game. It's and that's such that it is such a disgusting disgusting thing that they're doing and the only way it's going to stop is if all of us stop opening our wallets to them <sighs> moving on to number 12 missing online co-op features when it should be available gonna... <coughs> excuse me i'm gonna give you two examples of this resident evil revelations 2 which I personally enjoyed the game, except for the you know microtransactions and the raid raid mode, which was deplorable. But it it it's a game. The single play the single player game does not have uh, online co op. The raid mode does. I I don't even like the raid mode. But the story mode was fun, and in the story mode, I think I believe you always have two characters available, and it was perfectly designed for a co co-op experience to be an option and yet something that I would I would like to believe would be a simple addition to to add to the game was not a feature in the game it's like why in uh, and the other other example um pop one piece pirate warriors 3 I think it came out like 2015 um there's like several versions of it, the P uh, PS3, PS4, PC, and the PS3 and the PS, I mean the PS3 and the PC version do not by default have online co-op. The PS4 version does. So, you know, if you want to, well, you want to want to play with a friend or just some random people and just like enjoy the game with another person in a game that should definitely have that feature that I, I, Honestly, cannot imagine being difficult to implement. Simply having another person play with you—it's not there, unless you're playing the PS4 version. And I'm sitting there like the same game, and the console has it. Why? Because let's be face it. Regardless if PC has more power, and it's better, realistically speaking, in every way, shape, and form. Maybe, maybe maybe slightly debatable on the, you know, complexity of installing or whatnot. I can't think of the word. Uh, 
you know, like a system, you just put the disc in and play it, and it, it, it generally is supposed to work. PC, PC, I mean, I had to look at the hardware and all that stuff. But, um... Why? Just why? Just, just why would they not include, include features, features that shouldn't be difficult, sh shouldn't really be that difficult to implement, but would make the game so much better? I'm sure there's other examples. Maybe, maybe, maybe you have some that come to mind. Moving on. Number thirteen. Not considering s consumer feedback. This is definitely a very opinionated one because I can understand the hit and miss of this idea. It could definitely backfire. Because, let's face it, a lot of people are stupid. They don't know what they want. People people even complain complain about things that, like, are good. Like, oh, I, I think this is... Say, say they, they'll be like, I, I think this is terrible, even though it does something in another game they like. So, sometimes it's like, why even bother listening to people, right? Just make what you want. But... I put this as a point, particularly because of Capcom, because in my experience, I considered them famous for this. You know, how many how many people told them they wanted another Mega Man Legends, uh, Mega Man X Nine, read the uh, a poor or re poor or sequel to the Resident Evil Outbreak series, um, possibly possibly some others that are immediately coming to mind, but. <laughs> I gotta face it. I, I of course I understand that they're a business. I mean, I I'm stupid with some things, but I have I, I like to consider I have common sense. I understand their business. They need to make money. They need to make things that are are going to sell to as many people as they can, right? To make a pro profit. But consider your your consumer, your fans, the people that support you, right? And you have a, enough of a following saying that hey, they they would pay money for something. They want to see uh, they. They they want to see something come to real, um, uh, be produced. I can't I can't think of enough words. Um, I I just feel that maybe they should just like consider listening to them. I it's like, at the very least, you know there are people who out there who are going to, going to get get the thing and you make it because they're telling you they want it. So if you make it. That's gonna get net you some money. Maybe, maybe, maybe it won't work out. Maybe, even if it has a community, maybe the, maybe the community is too small and not enough people, not enough people will get it. But at the very least, acknowledge them. You know, get give a poll or something. Like I don't know. <laughs> it, for, it it's it's just kind of sad that like. A company that you know, it's, Capcom's a company that I respect because they've made so they've made many fantastic, gem mas masterful, must own games in the course of their history. But at some point, because of because of this point, I've started to stop respecting them. And I'm still I'm still waiting on that outbreak freaking sequel, man. One of the greatest games ever. Anyway, number fourteen. DRM. I'm not very experienced with this. If, what this is is when a game had uh, forces you to be online to play it, right? I think StarCraft One's like that. I mean, no, uh, StarCraft Two. It's supposedly not intentional, but like, I, I guess it's glitched right now thanks to. When they up up the gate update the game or break single player mode for whatever stupid reason, so for you to play say Starcraft and Starcraft Two say you have to log in to your I think it's called Battle Net account, and then once you do that, you are allowed to play the story mode. You cannot play the game that you paid the forty to sixty dollars for without being logged into their account. It doesn't sound like a big deal, right? Personally, it it is to me. I mean, yes. What if their what if their Battle.net server is down or goes down permanently, or but what if you don't have a stable internet connection in your area? What if you just can't afford internet? Period. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. And 
and um, I guess I guess some some comp some if not most uh, people companies or people that implement this DRM system do it to try to prevent pirating. But unfortunately, the the damage is a lot more. <laughs> the damage is probably more severe implementing this retarded system than it than it is to not have it. And the final final point, if you're still with me on this video, which I believe is like going on over 30 minutes now, is loot boxes. I also don't have a lot of experience with it. I don't have any experience with this personally because I don't think I've played any game that had this feature. But uh, we'll take like uh, I think Over uh, Overwatch and maybe some of the new Call of Duties have it, where you you can pay real money, or I, I think some of them might also like give them to you if you play enough of the game. But yeah, like if you. You're pay paying real money to get these like boxes, and it gives you like random things. Could be aesthetic items, like you know, different color, different colored uh, items like hats, guns. Uh, I mean, uh, ca camo, uh, character models, or whatnot. And I suppose, suppose that's fine. You know, sure, why not? As a general idea. But it comes, it, it truly, truly becomes offensive and unjustifiable once they do this for like things that we'll say in the in the context of Call of Duty give you an advantage over other players, like better guns, like better perks, something that would make it easier for you to to be able to defeat your opponent, and to make it and and. Keep it, keeping in mind, it's a loot crate, right? So it's like a randomized thing. So it's even worse. It's even worse than just plain buying the gun, buying the gun or whatever would give you an advantage. You're paying actual money out of your from your bank account or with your cash or whatever, whatever the case, right? For a chance to get these things. So you're literally just throwing away money for this nonsensical thing. It's such a cheap and cheesy and pathetic and sickening way for these companies to milk money out of people. And you, you, you've heard the, you've heard those stories, like the the kid spends like hundreds or even thousands of dollars on something, his parent his parents' card or something they he never should have had, but the parents the parents just frankly suck. In any case, um. That's that's enough for my rambling. I think this this video has been long enough probably longer than it should have been but um so what what are your what are your thoughts on this if you have any i guess uh do, do you have there any like generalized or specific mistakes in gaming you know even like even something as censorship which i should have included on this list honestly we all know how bad well some of us know how bad censorship can be in, in any case, uh, I'm going to end the video now. Thank you all for stopping by and have a fantastic day.